Welcome to So Very Easy's Sewing Room. Come on up. I'm so glad you could join me today in a tour of my sewing room. I like to make my sewing room comfortable for me. I spend a lot of time in my room doing my crafts and hobbies, so I like it to be comfortable. And I do have an area where I like to sit and do my hand sewing. I have a magnifying lamp, and this is from Bright Tech. It gives me a lot of lighting for my needlepoint and hand stitching, knitting, whatever I like to do. I have a great wall rack, and this is where I store some of the projects, like my quilts, where they're not finished being quilted yet, and I get to enjoy how they look, and it also reminds me to get them quilted. I have an area here where I'm able to do my sewing. To start with, I have made a very big surface and I was able to do it with some shelving. And these shelves are just the IKEA square little units that you can put baskets in. Each of these baskets are projects that are upcoming videos and everything that I'm going to need is in the basket so that when I start the project, it's handy. Even though I have a couple of different surfaces, I've made sure all of my surfaces are level even so much as my sewing machine bed is level to my counter. In this way, I have a big, flat surface. Because I did not need the right-hand side at the same level, I've left it a little bit lower, and I'm able to put some things that I like to sew with right on my right-hand side. And because I made this all one level, I was able to put some extra cutting mats right beside my machine. So I can remove these if I just want a quilt or I'm going to be able to cut and sew at the same time. To make this table equal with my machine and equal with the table behind, I had to raise up this little counter. So what I have here is a flat table that the machine is actually sitting on and then a table piece that's been carved the same shape as my sewing machine bed that sits on top and I needed something to make that all level. And I was able to go to the hardware store and get these little pipe pieces. Now these are PVC pipe conduits and they're in the plumbing department. Underneath each of these, I've just put an anti-slip pad and then I've placed the surface right on top. So after a while, they just sort of stick onto the surface and they don't slide. This is just a sheet of plywood that has been carved out to the shape of my acrylic tabletop. I've just painted it and have waxed it so it has a nice smooth surface. And this is all level. So my machine is sitting underneath and everything is flat along the top. I am very short so I need a chair that I'm going to be able to raise to the height that I need. This is a bar stool and what I like about it is it has a spot for my foot and I've had a surface built so that I can put my pedal on it and I'm going to be in the right position. My bar stool is not on wheels and that way the chair stays where I want the chair to be. I'm also able to get some drawer units underneath the table and here I can have some notions and extra thread that I need. And I was able to have another one on the right side. Now on the right side, I'm going to be able to leave that open as I'm sewing and take what small notions I have and it keeps my counter clean up at the top. And when I'm done, it stays closed and it's nice and clean. With the smaller notions in the drawer, I'm able to keep other things in this little area where the counter is not as high. I can have my pictures that make me happy, and I have a little bowl, and this is a thread fabric catcher. This helps keep my room from getting so dirty. Pin cushion and a little tray and in this tray I have little pieces of fabric that I'm able to put through the machine as I start to sew. I have a little pair of snips hanging on my sewing machine. This is just put on with a suction cup. If I don't have them on the hook I'm sure to have them walk all over my room. With this flat surface I was able to pull over an L counter and it worked out to be just a little desk. 
where I'm able to put my serger. And under my serger, I have all of my go-to threads. All of the threads are put in so that they're not moving all over the place. This is a thread from Filtech. It is a polyester, but it looks like cotton and it feels like cotton. But it works great on my serger and it also works great on my sewing machine. And I keep my color chart handy so I'm able to get whatever I need. And I can move my bar stool over to this area and use this machine. On the side of my serger, I also like to have my notions. I find I don't need as many notions as I do with my sewing machine, but they're also handy if I do need them. But I have a little holder here, and this little holder is a toothbrush holder. But it holds my tools and it looks nice. In this little jewelry box, I have some extra things that I need for my serger, and I like to use clips instead of pins around my serger. Because I'm in this little corner, I do need some extra light. This is a very bright from daylight. It has this great gooseneck so I can move it wherever I need. On the wall, I've hung up an old ironing board. Now, this was from my mother-in-law's house, so I didn't want to get rid of it. But I wanted to use it, so I have put styrofoam behind it. I was able to just take some wooden sticks and put them right in the holes of the ironing board. They go through that styrofoam on the back and this has given me an opportunity to hang my large spools of thread that I like to use for my serger. On this side is what you normally see when I do the videos. I have a nice big area where I can display my quilts. Now this unit was for TVs so a big wall TV is supposed to go there but I'm going to just use it to display my quilts. But it gave me an opportunity to have some shelves on both sides that I'm able to store my fabric and things that just make me happy. And on the other side, I have the duplicate shelves. So I have patterns and more fabric running all the way along to the bottom. And I have all of my interfacing and stabilizers tucked into the bottom. They're not as pretty as the fabric, so I'm okay with them hiding. I do have two body doubles because I often have more than one project on the go. And way tucked in the corner, I have larger bolts of fabric and larger foams and interfacings that I'm able to use. And I have a nice big window that gives me lots of light in the room, so I'm able to feel that at least I'm somewhat outside. On the other side of the window, I have a shelving unit and again that has all different projects that I'm working on for the videos. So they might not be projects that are finished but they're ideas or things that I'm starting to work on. They're not complete. The complete ones go in the large baskets. So these are all ideas and things that are going to be coming up. On the opposite side of my TV wall unit I have a wall that is just a flannel wall. This is flannel that has been stretched on two by fours and have been stuck on the wall. And that flannel I'm able to put on quilt blocks so that I can see what they're going to look like on a distance. So sometimes you will see this side of the wall when I'm showing you a quilt. So now I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to put it where it normally sits as I'm filming. It's going to give you a better idea of how the room is set up. So this is normally where the camera is set up and the videos are being taken. Often you might see this little thing hanging in the corner of your vision and it is my remote control for the camera. Sometimes I'll forget where it is so I've put it there so I know where it is at all times. Sometimes you might catch that in the camera. This is a nice big cutting area and a filming area. I have a good size pinnable mat and that stays on my counter. I also use a second cutting mat. The pinnable mats are more for protecting my surface and doing garment sewing. The extra mats are good for my quilting and things along that way. I'm able to move it and do whatever I need to keep it in the camera lens and it keeps it comfortable for me. It fits my pinnable mat and my pinnable mat is 60 inches by 32 inches and I have a little bit extra just on the edge. 
I'll show you how easy this cabinet was to build. So this is where I normally stand and I have a little bit of the counter sticking out so I'm able to stand comfortably towards it. On the two sides I have dressers and on the dresser ends I have these great little hooks that I'm able to hang up my rulers for dressmaking and my rulers for quilting. This is one long shelf that goes through the entire thing and I'm able to put lots of things sliding in so that if I have a large bolt of fabric I can put it in. So this is one big shelf that goes all the way to the other side so I can work on it from this side or I can work from it on the other side. And in the top shelf I have a boot tray. This is just one of these plastic trays that you put your boots on or shoes on when you come in the house. And it has my very long rulers, which will not fit hanging up. Another extra mat and then a little basket, which keeps some of the notions and things that I need when I'm working right here on this counter. I do have this area raised, so I have a toe kick. So as I'm standing here, I'm not going to bang my toes on the bottom shelf. I'm able to stand here comfortably and have my toes go underneath. So I have two dressers, one here going the long way and one on the other side. So this is a big countertop and it just sits right on top of the two dressers and with this piece in the center. This is not attached, it's loose, and that way if I need to reconfigure it, I can. So what I have done is underneath I've put a pad that is an anti-slip rug surface. So you have that rug pad underneath that counter and on top that dresser. and That really prevents it from moving. So I have storage on all four sides. On my cutting surface, I like to have things handy that I'm using just for cutting, not sewing. So I have these little jewelry mannequins. They're just designed to hang necklaces on. I have one for my rotary cutters and one for my scissors. I've glued them onto a heavy pot base so that they don't tip over. And it also gives me an area to store little things. Little rulers that I'm using for the project go in this little plate holder and this is just designed to put plates on and I'm going to be able to take this and move it wherever I need to closest to my project so it will have little rulers and notes that I'm using for that project. I have another bowl where I'm able to put my scraps in to help keep my room clean. I have this little pastry scoop and that helps me scoop up the threads and the extra fabric and dump it inside. And I have weights for my patterns. They look like little strawberries but they're nice and heavy and they hold my pattern pieces down on top of my fabric so I don't always have to use pins. And I have lots of industrial lighting so that I'm able to have the proper lighting. I have lighting even in the window so if it's a cloudy day I'm going to be able to duplicate that daylight in the studio. I often get asked about my little Raggedy Andy here, and I've had him for many, many years. It was a gift from a dear friend, and the rest are pictures that I've done years ago. My earliest piece is this little man, and from there, all of these projects have been done. I've had some where I was in grade school and in high school, and just all of the things that I worked on as a child. And this little unit is designed for spools of thread. But I use it for my little scissors and my thimbles. I have my grandmother's thimble. I have my husband's grandmother's thimble. So it seems that I'm collecting these thimbles over the year. I keep a little folding table behind my chair. This table I'm able to drag all over the room if I need an extra surface. And I have a little hook there which has my extra machine beds. That way they stay nice and they don't get damaged. And we're going to continue going around the room and the very last area is my pressing area. I have a big pressing surface. The measurement of this surface is half a yard 
And that way, when I'm pressing a half a yard, I don't need to worry about any folds. I'm going to be able to just lay it out flat and press it. This is also in a little area which sometimes can be dark. So I do have a daylight lamp. It can give me all sorts of light with just a press of the button. The artwork on the back is from my daughter. So it's a great joy for me to look at. My iron is not a typical iron. It is not industrial, but it's an industrial like. So it has a water reservoir. I can put two liters of water in here and that steam comes through this little hose. I never run out of steam and it always stays hot. It doesn't turn off and on like a regular iron. So it's very much like an industrial, but it is made for home use. And I do have another bowl to keep scraps of fabric and little thread snippets. And this was all built on top of a desk. It was just a big old computer desk and I built in extra shelving where your chair and your legs would have gone. So I have a good surface for my batting, my extra things that I need for pressing. This pressing surface is just a big piece of wood where I put lots of padding on it and stretch a nice strong piece of canvas over top of it. And I put it on just two pieces of wood. I have storage underneath. And by having that wood not attached to the surface, I'm going to be able to use this not only standing, but sitting. I pull out my stool and I pull out my ironing surface. So now I can sit here and iron. And when I'm done, it just slides back so that I can stand and press while I'm standing. This does not go right to the wall. So a lot of times I will need a lot of fabric that needs to hang on both sides of the iron. And having that big space gives me that opportunity. Right underneath my water tank for my iron, I have a little drawer unit. In there I'm able to keep extra pin cushions so that if I need pins, they're here. I also have iron cleaner, pressing cloths, and I like to keep the instruction manuals of everything that I get close to that item. So I do have the directions and the instruction sheets that came with the machines right underneath. And as you can see, I have more pictures. I like to keep pictures and small things that mean a lot to me. It helps keep me inspired and it makes it a really nice place for me to come to, even if I just want to sit and read and have a quiet space. And here's an overall look of my sewing room. I would like to thank you today for joining me in my sewing room. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.